Greetings and salutations and thank you for clicking on this video. Today we're going to talk about some accessibility options that are available in Linux Mint Cinnamon that may be very useful to you if you are visually impaired or if you are using Linux Mint on a very small or a very large display. The first one that I want to talk a little bit about is just good old Zoom and the reason why is because I had somebody not too long ago who contacted me and said, hey, I'd really like to use Linux Mint, but I need a good screen magnifier. I'm visually impaired, and I was very happy to say that Linux Mint has one of the best there is. A lot of these features are available in other desktops, but to tell you the truth, it is really well implemented in Mint. And I think one of the reasons that that is so is because I know for a fact that there is a person on the Linux Mint development team who is visually impaired and works on these accessibility options. So let's take a look at what you can do to make things easier to see. Well, the first thing that we're going to look at is Zoom. And I do have that on. And I have it on the default settings. And I'm using the alternate key as the key that you press on the keyboard to get this to work. I suggest leaving it there. That is the default setting and I will tell you why because it works very well in concert with some features that are available in Google Chrome and Firefox that a lot of people don't know about. I'm going to show you those in this video as well. So to get the zoom running you just turn it on and then hold down the alternate key and use the scroll wheel on the mouse and you scroll up and look everything gets nice and big now those of you who have been watching my videos for a very long time may remember that a long time ago I used to do this in my videos for people who were watching on small displays and then I stopped doing it because people were saying that it made them kind of dizzy because the default setting is that it follows the cursor. So if you're trying to show somebody something, it's like if I want to show you this, then I jump over here, and I'd get all excited, and I'd move real fast, and you'd get a screen that was doing this, and it was making people dizzy. So <laughs> I stopped doing that for a while. Uh, might bring that back if people ask for it, but chances are they won't. Okay, so you can also have this set up where you can have this done in like a square on the screen or a horizontal strip or a vertical strip or something like that. So if you're used to using a screen magnifier that way, then you can do that as well. And you can also change how the cursor follows the mouse. Uh, keep the cursor centered. That means that the screen will follow along. See, there you go. See, the, the cursor doesn't change. It stays centered. But I find that the cursor moving with the contents is a little better. Let's see. Let's see what happens when we get the cursor to push contents around when we're in zoom mode. Oh, I see. That could be useful as well. So you'd have to go out to the edge of the screen to move it around, and then with when you're within your square, it doesn't move. So you could do that as well. That's pretty cool. We'll put it back on the cursor moves the con moves with contents because I'm used to this. If I'm actually going to use this feature, so that's how Zoom works, and that is basically it. So let's go ahead and zoom out. And the next thing that I want to show you is the high contrast theme because we're right here. And this is kind of useful for some folks. Uh, if you have to deal with contrast, you can turn this on. Right now I have this set on the default theme that you get when you install it, which is Mint X. This is what it looks like when you install it. If you, if you turn on high contrast, that's what you get right there. So this is a high contrast theme. And you get the high contrast icon set as well. So this might be very useful for some folks in combination with the zoom. It just makes it easier to see some things if the contrast is something that you need. And if I turn it back off, it'll go back to the, to the default settings. Now here you'll also see that it, you can activate large fonts. I don't suggest that you do it here. So let's go over and jump into fonts right now. We'll take a look at fonts. What I do is set them manually, and I just set everything for 12. That seems to be a very nice font for the screen that I have. And you guys have probably already noticed that a lot of the videos that I do, they're in 1610. And that is because I have a very particular screen size that I like. It's a 1610 21-inch monitor. 
and it's 1440 by 900 resolution. If you give me a really big monitor, you might think, oh, well, you can make things nice and big now, can't you? Well, yeah, but then it's kind of like it, get lo it gets lost on the screen, and smaller than that, well, obviously, then you run into issues. I just really like these monitors. It's in a sweet spot. I got like three of them. Anyway, going getting back to fonts here, uh, I set mine manually to the same size, which is 12. They do have a font scaler here, but if you use it, you're going to get some weird things happen depending on the application, and it, it just makes things bigger. Like it'll make in Google Chrome, the latest versions of Google Chrome, it'll make the, the bars at the top really, 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 really big when you scale the fonts. So if you set them manually, you don't get those kind of oddities. And then, of course, you can also set aliasing here and if that's something that you need if things look a little strange to you. So there's how you set fonts. These things work really well, not only for people who are visually impaired, but if you have a high DPI monitor, if you have a 4K monitor, or if you have the output of your computer running to your 60-inch television on the wall, you may run into a situation where you open up something and the fonts are just so teeny tiny that you can't see them, uh, especially when you first install. Now, Linux Mint usually will catch that you're you have a high DPI display and it'll automatically make these changes but if for some reason it doesn't then what you can do is bust out a magnifying glass and then go to the settings and go to general and then if you set this thing where it will double everything on the screen for high DPI then you'll get a, a desktop that looks like this. Of course it's not rendering properly now because this is not a quote-unquote high DPI display but if it doesn't catch that automatically, that's where that, that's where you can change that is right there. Another thing that I like to do is to use darker themes, and I kind of alternate back and forth between two themes. It depends on what mood I'm in. I'll either install New Mix and use that, or I, I will play around with the dark theme. So let's look at the dark theme, and then you come to themes here, and this is already installed. So all you do is just choose dark choose dark and I'm actually putting my theme back the way I want it because this is how I had it set up before I started the video and I put it back to the defaults and then for icons I just really like this icon set it's gnome colors common it just looks nice on Linux Mint so this is what my desktop looks like once I get that in there I just like the gnome icons because they're gaudy and they're very different from one another and I find that with the later icons that are square or round, like the new mix or arc icons, that for me, I have a hard time telling one from the other unless I get right up on the screen and go, okay, what is that? With the gnome icons, I'm so used to them that they're easy to see for me. So I've showed you kind of how you can set all this up in Linux Mint, and we've talked about Zoom which is a cool feature to have. Now on some video cards, activating the zoom will make the screen, it'll slow down the frame rate a little bit. So you might notice that. So if you don't absolutely positively don't need it, you might want to leave it off. I don't have that problem with my Nvidia card. It seems to work just fine. It doesn't make any difference. But if you're using open source drivers on like an old AMD card, you might notice that because I have in the past. The Cinnamon desktop is a little bit framey to begin with. It's got a little, as the animations go by and stuff like that, I've noticed. Anyway, the next thing that I want to show you is a feature that is in your browser that you may not know about it. So I'm going to go to the Easy Linux page here in Google Chrome. This works just exactly the same way in Firefox and many other browsers as well. And what you can do with a browser is you can dynamically scale the rendering of the page. Now what we're doing here is we're not zooming in and zooming out. We are actually re-rendering the page to make things look bigger. So to do that you use the control key and the scroll wheel on the mouse. And now see I'm making the Easy Linux page very large. This is what it would look like on a mobile device. And we worked very hard to get this to render properly on mobile devices. And it when it zoomed in as well. That's something that uh, Jeremy O'Connell and I worked on from CyberWeb Solutions to make things so they would look proper on mobile as well. And if you come down to the bottom of the page when you look at the Easy Linux page you can 
check out CyberWeb Solutions. Uh, so you can zoom in real quick and you can re-render the page to see certain text. Sometimes people who create these pages go a little crazy and it'll actually come up with text like that and it's like really tiny. And if you're, you know, you're okay, you can see that. That's cool. That's not a problem. But like I said, big monitor, small monitor, visual impairment, that might be an issue. So it's nice to be able to re-render the page. And then this also works with keyboard shortcuts in the browser. So you don't have to use the mouse. You can hit the control key and then the plus key next to the backspace makes things bigger or smaller. And if you press the zero key, what it will do is it will return it to the standard size. So if you use that in conjunction with the zoom feature, then you have two ways of doing it. Because sometimes, depending on how a page is laid out, if you use the zoom feature in there, then what you're going to get is things aren't going to render right, stuff will be in the way. We, you wouldn't want to use that. So in this case, we just hit the alternate key and then we can zoom in anywhere on the page and then it will follow it nicely like this and we can look at the different parts of the page. And the scroll wheel then will scroll the page. We can look at the bottom. See? So it's, it's very nice that way. And to get back, just hold the alternate key down and then zoom down all the way out and you're back to where you were. So there you go, gang. It's a look at some of the accessibility options. I see the workers across the street working on the water tower have cranked up their sandblaster. Thought I was going to beat them, but I didn't. Thank you for watching the video. Be sure and check out Easy Linux on the web. Check out Easy Linux on Facebook. And also check out FreedomPenguin.com for lots of really cool stories about Linux. And we will do this again soon.